Yes, behold, the closest thing to a Christmas jumper I own. Hello world, I'm making 12 videos in 12 days all about games I played around Christmas. Because Wu-Tang Clan are a group of fellows with whom copulating is a most inappropriate venture. You might not have heard of this one, and frankly you might still not believe me once I've told you, but there exists a fighting game based around the Wu-Tang Clan. Yes, protect your neck, 36 chambers, gravel pit, that Wu-Tang Clan. Now, the subtitle for this will change depending on your side of the pond. Taste the pain over here and Shaolin style over there. Now, I'm betting somebody will mention this if I don't, so here goes. The basis of this was in a game called Thrill Kill, which is exactly as murdery and violent as the title would suggest. The original publisher, Virgin Interactive, was bought by EA. Now, not only did EA not want to release this, they would refuse to sell it to anybody else. Not for any particular reason, but EA regarding themselves as moral guardians strikes me as quite funny. And then it got leaked on the internet. Rumour has it it was the disgruntled dev that did the job, and that's how the internet came to know about Thrill Kill in the first place. Anyway, back to this. It's a fighting game which features two to four people in the arena at once. Sometimes it's two on two, sometimes it's one on two, sometimes it's even three on one. So it's not always one on one, that's weird enough. Weirder still is the fact that it has lives. Yeah, that's right. Lose all your health, you lose a life. Lose all your life, you lose. That kind of lives. And even though I'm pretty sure this was in the twilight of Mortal Kombat's initial heyday, this has fatalities in it, which are triggered based on the last hit you landed on your opponent. You've got four types of hits, so that's four fatalities. Four fatalities for each of the nine members of the clan, which you have to unlock in story mode first, but that brings us on to another interesting thing. The story mode has you progress from Staten Island to mainland New York all the way to China via these hub systems. You complete one of the fights in the hub, it unlocks some more. Now you only need to do about 12 of these fights to complete the main story. Each of those 12 or so fights that you beat unlock a new story fight and a couple of side fights. Although it's a bit annoying when the fight that takes you off of one hub onto the other unlocks a fight on the original hub so you have to go back and you've got the 36 chambers to think about. These are bonuses that are unlocked by doing certain actions within the story mode. There's the usual rubbish like concept art that literally nobody cares about ever. But there's also new arenas, new characters, new modes and new fatalities. Yeah, you start off with one fatality and you have to unlock the rest. Even better, some of the 36 chambers are unlocked by doing the consequent fatalities. Now the actions you have to do to get these bonuses are things like block a certain number of hits or chain together a certain length of combo. By the way, good bloody luck getting a 9 hit combo with anybody but Method Man. And it's only the benefit of hindsight that lets me go back and think, this is probably the earliest incarnation of achievements as we know them today. Arguably better since they do something other than improve your EP. Oh and all 36 of those things you have to unlock, there's one for each of the 9 characters. Good luck. As you might have guessed, this had a bit of a polarising reception when it was released. Tangent, I remember one magazine review suggesting that fans of the clan would buy the game, take it over to a friend's house who had a PlayStation and put it in just to hear the new tracks that they specifically recorded for the game. Guys, stick it in a CD player and skip track one. J Rocket Science this is not. Now, as tends to be the trend with this list, I like this game, but I recognise it is not a masterpiece. Hell, some reviewers seemed confused by the fact you couldn't jump. Yeah, it's clunky in places. Targeting enemies is done automatically, so if you're facing more than one of them, you kind of have to roll the dice to see which one's getting hit. Either that or you just spam spin moves. And not even the voice acting of the clan members themselves could save the story from the fact it's rubbish and bad CGI and also rubbish. But there's a good amount of variety to the fights you have. You've got your one-on-one -on -one matches, you've got your group matches. Sometimes you have to protect someone who's injured and can't take part in the fight. This wave of guys, they die in one hit, but they constantly respawn and you have to hold them off for two whole minutes. See, you have to actually alter your playstyle to get through these things. These guys die in one hit, no point in using heavy moves. That guy tries to throw me, better stay back and use anything that's got long range. And really, the fact that it's a licensed title which is not blatant shovelware or completely abysmal, you know, sometimes that is good enough for me. And if nothing else, it was the first time I'd seen group fights like this. Granted, Power Stone is probably a hell of a lot better, but I hadn't seen it by that point. So I hope that's clear, not a masterpiece, you'll never see it in a tournament anytime soon, but I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Dig it.